when I'm training for a long distance hike, you have to be able to walk with a purpose. So, I use my driveway. It's 1.6 miles from my front door to the asphalt and back to the front door. It's got some pretty nice hills. And uh, I walk at about 4 miles an hour uphill. On this hill, I'm actually averaging about 3.2 kind of a small hill but on the flat surfaces I'm pretty close to four miles an hour and when I'm training for these hikes my real goal is one to get used to walking because it doesn't matter how much you work out in a gym it doesn't matter how much cardio you do on a machine Cause I do those every day. I've been doing them for 16 weeks. Walking uses entirely different muscles. And the only way to exercise and strengthen those muscles is to walk. So I start doing the driveway. Um, I actually started this a week ago. I've done, done it every day. It's actually, you might hear thunder in the background. It's supposed to rain, but you know it rains when you're out hiking on trails too. But uh, anyways, when I started, it was 40, 43 minutes it took me to complete. And just by doing this every day, when I did it yesterday, I got my time down to 33 minutes. So my goal is to continuously increase my speed and then... Um, once I get below 30 minutes, I start adding weight and I'll build up to like what my pack weighs on a resupply day, which I'm pretty ultra light and I carry seven and a half days of food and I try to resupply every six days and you might say, well, why are you carrying an extra day and a half of food for? Because some days you don't make your resupply day. And I'd rather carry a little extra food. You know, a day and a half of food's about uh, two pounds. And make sure I have enough in case I get behind on my mileage. Like I did on Bent Mackay Trail where I got sick and I was actually three days getting to my resupply. I ran out of food. So them, them days without food was bad, bad days, bad miles. Um, anyways. I'll go ahead and flip this camera around. I'm actually going down kind of one of the big hills, but it's not as steep as the one I'm coming up on. And then I'll continue talking so you can kind of see why I use my driveway as kind of like a gauge or a training route. Um, be right back. Again, we're nearly at the bottom of this hill. This next one coming up is probably the steepest, the highest elevation change, and the longest all in one shot. Now the one I come down is probably just as much elevation change, but it's downhill going this way. And then it's not as steep going back. So I'll put up a uh, elevation change on my driveway. And you can kind of see it's up and downhill, but this last hill... This one here is the one that always gets me. You can't really tell it because, you know, it's a video. Never gives a perspective correctly. But it changes. It's 100 feet of elevation. It's probably about a 30% grade. But, you know, it kind of starts out not so bad. It's once you get up here, a little ways past where those sticks are out in the driveway, it actually goes up much quicker. And that's where it gets you. That's like you think you see the top of the hill, but you don't. You see where it actually kind of levels back out again. <laughs> and keeps going uphill for another distance. But one of my goals is, is to also not stop on this hill. Try to keep my pace. Keep going. Now you got to remember, I've been working out for 16 weeks now. Six days a week, heavy cardio, lifting weights, 
I'm probably at the lowest body fat percentage I've been at in the best shape I've been at since probably maybe uh, 2018 I didn't do a hike in 19 or 20 20s when I got cancer my health really went downhill during the cancer I lost a ton of weight put on a lot of body fat um, funny story the doctors approved me to begin working out and then kind of got a little mad so you can tell it still goes way up I'm not stopping at it stopped so the camera stopped shaking for a split second um, but when I told them how much I was working out how much I was eating they kind of seemed like he got a little aggravated but I do this all the time was kind of my thing I said this feels normal to me and I just want something that feels normal in my life um, anyways when I started working out <laughs> my complaint to the doctor was and one of the things he said that really just irked me he said but your BMI is in the normal range now BMI is a thing that doctors use to tell if you're obese, normal, uh, fit, athletic, and I think they use pro or something for like not a lot of body fat. But it's this measurement that's like the average body weight based on your height. Now, you can have a good BMI range and still be obese. And that's exactly what I was. Obese is anything above 25% body fat. And I was at 32.8 when I decided to take fitness back into my own hands. And we crossed that hill and actually started going back downhill. That's a pretty good push though. And I've done it in 15, 15 minutes. Now, so what I do is up here, the gravel changes the asphalt. That's where the county road starts. I touch the asphalt, set the lap time on my watch. And then I do the same thing on the way back where when I get to the front step, I touch the lap thing on my watch. I can't do it where you can see it. 15 minutes, 37 seconds. So usually my time back is usually quicker. So I think it was, was it 32 or 33 minutes? Yes, 32 minutes and some change yesterday. So I think I'm gonna beat that time. And uh, you know, even though it's the same hills, it's a whole different profile elevation a matter of fact i'll put in the image like where the top of this hill is at and uh or i'll or i'll lay the image like kind of from the start of the route to the end actually you should be able to see that because where the it puts a line where the laps at. so basically you turn around and you go back it's the same hills but the hill profiles and elevations are different because now this big hill that I struggled on getting up is now downhill and the other big hill that I came down on the last time is now uphill and even though it's probably the hills just as tall it's not as as a steep upgrade so I think that's kind of like the easiest way to explain that but visually you'll be able to see it so I know a lot of people that get out and they walk like I know a person that walks like I think she told me three miles every day or like her morning walk 
And I was like, do you have a fitness watch? And she goes, yeah. And I was like, does it do elevation change? And she's like, yeah. And she sent me a picture. And I was like, so there's this thing about fitness and cardio. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I do. And I'm going to share it with you. If I walk this same route every day and I don't change what I do. So I don't try to go faster I don't try to go slower. I don't try to add weight. After two to three weeks, walking this route becomes counterintuitive to increasing your cardio level. Because your body has this thing called muscle memory and also to a degree cardio memory. So like if you think when you first walk a new route, and it or or maybe you like when you first start walking it seems really difficult let me let this car pass so when you first walk a new route and it feels really difficult you're like out of breath and then if you walk that same route after about two or three weeks for most people you'll notice that it got really easy all of a sudden. Like, it could be really hard today, and tomorrow, if tomorrow's like three weeks and a day, you go to do it, all of a sudden, it's like really easy. Like, maybe you were sweating and out of breath a lot, and then on that like three weeks and one day, suddenly, like, you didn't sweat, you weren't out of breath, your legs weren't sore, that's because the body's gotten used to that route. And if you have a fitness watch and you start tracking, I can actually show you on this, this. Even though when I, the first day I walked this, I was in really good shape. I burned about twice as many calories that day, which was only about a week and a day ago, than what I'll burn today, even though I'm doing the route quicker. Because your body and your muscles have gotten used to it and your cardio system's gotten used to it and that's with any cardio it doesn't matter if it's walking an elliptical you know exercise bike stair stepper bow bow flex max it doesn't uh treadmill it doesn't matter after about two or three weeks of doing the same thing your body's muscle memory and cardio memory will kick in and now you're actually burning less calories. So that means in order to get the same beneficial workout, you got to work twice as hard or change it up in some way. So that's why I said that once I get below 30 minutes, I'll start adding weight because I'm changing the exercise then. And again, it'll be difficult until I get used to that weight. And then I'll add more weight and it'll start out really hard and it'll get easy. And I'll add more weight. And that's also why I know you've never seen like my workout plan. I never do the same workouts back to back two days in a row or even more than like a, two or three times a week. There are some exceptions. And let me tell you what the exceptions are. I'm obviously doing this walking exercise every day, but I'm changing it up as I go as I feel my body adjust. I make the same route harder. I either walk faster or I add weight. All right, so squats. Squats is part of my everyday lift weightlifting routine, but I have to constantly add weight every day. If I don't add weight, you'll have the same deal. And really, I try to add weight every workout for all my workouts, but um, even like on the Bowflex Max, let me turn this around. You don't need to see the whole driveway. So I just come up the second big hill or the first hill I went down, I just came up and now it's still some hills, but they're not near as bad. Um, back to what I was saying. Even when I do the Bowflex Max workouts and let's say I'm doing a, uh, I'm weightlifting, so I kind of cut back on my cardio. Um, 
and I'm doing like a 14 minute bow flex max workout. So one day I might do it exactly the way it's programmed into the bow flex max. If I'm doing that same workout multiple days, the second day I might add five or 10 seconds into the work time. So instead of doing it for 30 seconds, I do it for 40 seconds. And then the third day, I might do it at a higher resistance than the previous two days. And on the fourth day, I might go back down to 35 seconds instead of 30 seconds with either a higher resistance. Sometimes I go even a lower resistance than the first day, which that's really tough, believe it or not. Because then you have to really increase the RPMs. But the point I'm trying to get is I'm not doing, I'm not just saying 14 minute bow flex max, get on the bow flex, set the resistance to whatever it was the previous day, doing the exercise the way it's programmed, hop off and say I'm done. Because if I do that, again, your body gets used to it and then you have to work harder to get the same workout. So, and I kind of think, I mean, I made this mistake and kind of the reason why I'm bringing this up, uh, the first long distance hike that I did, uh, three, 324 miles, the first real true long distance hike. So there's been lots of times I go out and I hike over a weekend, do 30, 40 miles on a weekend, but long distance hike to me is 300 miles or above. So the first time I did one was 2016. I spent literally all of the end of 2015 and 2016 training in my home gym. I had a recumbent bike, I had weights. So I'm like training in my gym. And I was in really good physical shape. I'd done a couple like local hikes, two or three miles at a time, like around where I lived. I had gone down to Red River Gorge and done some hikes down there. I think the longest one was about nine miles. Wasn't really much effort. I'm thinking, man, I got this whipped. I'll be able to fly on this Chitauri Trace Trail. And uh, didn't work out that way. <laughs> There's a statement called trail legs. And you hear about people like saying they start a hike and it takes several weeks to get your trail legs. and. But see, I thought I was skipping it. I thought I was in shape. I thought I was in shape enough and I would have my trail legs and it didn't work out that way. The only way to get trail legs is to walk. Walk a lot. Walk a whole lot. Build your miles up. Build the amount of weight up that you're carrying. Do all these things. And then you probably still ain't gonna have trail legs because more than likely the route you're walking today doesn't match the hardness of the ground or the elevation changes or any of that stuff so you're still going to go through a phase when you hit the trail but doing a lot of walking before you hit the trail will reduce that time i'm telling you like huh how long does it take me to get my trail legs on the toy trace trail so i got injured uh 14 days in and I hold up in this place, a uh, room that I rented. I think I was there for two or three days. And it was an IT band issue. And it was all inflamed and all messed up. And I even went to like a pharmacy nearby and got some braces and Lyco tape and like no matter what I did, I couldn't get back on the trail. So I had to go back and finish it the next year. Now on the Bent Mackay Trail, I had a very similar issue, except for it was IT band. Again, I've had IT band issues like my whole entire life. Um, but the difference was every day on that trail when I woke up in the morning, I did like some stretching. And the stretches helped quite a bit. Uh, even though I was in pretty good shape when I did that trail, 
No, actually I wasn't. I was in horrible shape when I started that trail. <laughs> but I was able to get my mileage in until I got sick. Um, and then once I got better and got my resupply after I ran out of food, um, I ended up coming down a really steep hill. I put my foot on a rock. The rock slipped. My foot slipped off the rock. So like, think your foot's on a rock. Slips off the rock. It hard hit the ground. Kind of like jammed my whole entire leg. And my ankle swelled up. It was horrible. By the time I got to Topaco Lodge, which is where I left off at, my ankle was like three times the size of what it was. And then they didn't have a room because I showed up a couple days late where I got sick and got behind on my miles. And the day that I showed up just happened to be Memorial Day weekend of 2018. So uh, they were fully booked. But I ended up staying at another place. Why am I forgetting that? Down the road. Oh man, I need to go back and see those people. But huh, I'm just kind of like rattling on now while I'm walking. Um, I still can't. Blue Mountain Lodge, I think, or Blue Mountain. Blue Mountain something. I'll have to look it up and I'll link to it because that's a great place to stay. Man, they have some great food, great atmosphere. Literally, the day I showed up, I hadn't had a shower in like 10 days. Nope, not going to lie. Showed up, hadn't had a shower in 10 days. They said, put your stuff in your room, get cleaned up, walk straight across the street. We're having a free cookout, free food and beer for everybody staying here. And I was like, are you serious? So that's exactly what I did. I ended up staying there for like two or three days, two nights, two nights, three days. And then I had to leave there because the room that I was in was booked, pre-booked. They didn't have any other rooms. So, been meaning to get back and finish Benton Mackay Trail. You know, it's kind of been heavy on my mind. Like there was no way I could die from cancer because I had an unfinished trail to hike. And, uh just wasn't gonna let it happen so now I'm trying to get back in shape to hike that trail and I just wanted to give you some tips how I get in shape for hiking before I hit the trail and uh, anyways I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off I can actually see my house now and I'll be there in just a few minutes I'm not going to edit out the part I can actually figure up in my head how long I stood there while the car passed and kind of get my time because the time's kind of important. I have to be able to get lower than 30 minutes before I add the weight. I mean, I don't have to, but that's just kind of like my rule. That's kind of like my game, my internal reward. Yes, you made it to 30 minutes. Now you can add some weight. And you know, if we don't set these challenges and goals in life, no matter what they are, attainable goals, and if you fail at everything, you'll never move forward. So, always set attainable goals before I move forward. Everything I do, it's just the way I live my life. Anyways, hope you found this interesting. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. And God bless your homesteads.